It's now time for members' statements. I recognize the member for Mishkegawak, James Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, member, the members of Moose Cree First Nations are concerned about a type of backroom deal this government does. On January 30th, the Ministry of Ener Energy, Northern Development Mines award, awarded Niobe Metal Inc. a exploration permit for drilling uh, and eventually developing a niobium mine. The exploration, the exploration is to take place on the shore of the South Bluff Creek watershed by the North French River in the James Bay area. The area in question plays a critical role in the lives of the Moose Creek for spiritual, cultural, and environmental reasons. At the, time of the, uh, at the time, and again, they have made it very clear that the opposition to this drilling project. Mr. Speaker, Moose Cree opposition, uh, Moose Cree opposition to this mining exploration development in the area is not new. In 2003, a different company tried to drill in these sensitive water lands, wetlands, and the community said no. Now the Conservatives are bluntly approving an exploration permit with no serious consultation with Moose Cree chief and council. Their right to oppose the drilling must be respected, Mr. Speaker. We are, taking the, uh, we are talking about an extremely sensitive ecosystem with one of the very few untouched watershed in Ontario. People drink directly from the water source. Let me make uh, one, one thing very clear. The role of the Minister of Energy and Development Mine is not to issue exploration permit as he pleases. His role is to consult, mediate, fact check, project, especially those that are as sensitive as the South Block Bluff Creek watershed. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to talk about an event that we had in Peterborough just a couple of weeks ago. It was held by the Humane Society of Peterborough. It's called the Furball Gala. Uh, the Humane Society has, has started a project to construct a new building for it on seven acres. We're really excited about this because it'll give enough land that uh, it'll be a, an area for the pets, the dogs, the cats to explore outside. We raised 50000 at the Furball Gala. Here, here. One key thing I'd like to talk to you about, though, from that, that event, we had a specific fundraiser referred to as Snoopy's Balls. <laughs> they are Christmas ornaments that have been decorated for cats and dogs. And it's named after Sue Dunkley, the organizer of the event. It's named after her dog, Snoopy. 82% of women who have a pet that are in a domestic violence situation refuse to leave for fear of what will happen to their pet. Snoopy's Balls, that fundraiser, provides a safe night for the pet of a woman trying to escape domestic violence. Here, here. I think it's a fabulous fundraiser. I'd like to see more people do those types of things because it does so much for our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Thank you. Member statements. The member for Oshawa. I stand today in solidarity with teachers, education workers, students, and parents who know that our children deserve a quality education in our provincial schools. I was a teacher for over 10 years and was proud to do some of the most rewarding, important work that I will ever do, helping our children reach their full potential. Our educators and education workers love what they do and should be appreciated and supported. Instead, this Premier and his minister have come out the gate swinging an axe at our public education system, undermining our boards and painting our teachers as incapable. Well, they aren't. Is this government incapable of recognizing the need to invest in our schools and students? We have a $16 billion repair backlog. This government is ripping funding away from families of children with autism who will, who will be funneled from needs-based therapy into our schools without transitions and without support. And this Premier thinks the way to improve is to cut. Here are some constituent thoughts for the Premier. Tracy says, quote, austerity measures are never an excuse for harming our most vulnerable population, our children. Your proposed changes are inequitable and dangerous. Christina says, with class sizes increasing, online courses being mandatory, and the threat of removing university-educated teachers from K-3, to that only means one thing for me. My job, which I love, is at risk. Melanie says, this isn't what's best for our children. I support low class sizes for all Ontario students and implore you to consult before making such sweeping changes. Stephen invites, I would love if some politicians came into my class to get a first-hand account of education. 
Tammy says, we can't afford to find efficiencies at the expense of students by taking teachers and support staff out of classrooms and cutting funding for programs that help kids thrive. Our schools are the heart of our communities and of our democracy and must be fully funded now. Speaker, this Premier must stop the cuts to education and start caring about our future. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Perry Sound Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I rise today to recognize the volunteers who made the Ontario 55 plus Winter Games happen earlier this month in Huntsville, Muskoka. 898 Ontarians between age 55 and 86 came together in friendly competition to encourage healthy, active lifestyles. They took part in alpine and cross country skiing, skating, badminton, volleyball table tennis, hockey, curling, bowling, and duplicate bridge. Events like this don't come together without a lot of hard work, so I want to thank the organizing committee chair, Fran Coleman, and general manager, Sherry Renault for all their work. I also want to thank volunteer co-chairs, Wendy McConnell and Ruth Ann Cook, events chair, Kelly Haywood, uh, sport technical co-chairs, John Cowan and Jonathan Percival, accommodation co-chairs, Steve Carr and Jennifer Brockett, and medical co-chairs, Emma Love and Angie Polson. The work of these volunteers was supported by local businesses, including gold sponsor, Drive Muskoka dealerships, silver sponsors, Your TV and Hunters Bay Radio, bronze sponsors, Downtown Huntsville BIA and Lake of Bays Brewery and Bullock's Independent Grocer and so many more. Finally, I want to recognize Huntsville Mayor Scott Aitchison and Town Council for their vision in applying to host the Games for the second time. While Huntsville was host, events took place in Berks Falls, uh, Bracebridge, Gravenhurst, as well as in Huntsville. The Games were a great success both for the athletes and for the community. The event brought added business to local hotels and resorts, restaurants and stores at a traditionally quiet time of year. Congratulations. Thank you. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I like to rise and talk about Meals on Wheels, Niagara Falls, Niagara on the Lake, and Fort Erie. Last Wednesday, I had an incredible opportunity of riding along with them as they did their deliveries. To lose their food to elderly, to disabled, to veterans, to anyone who needs meals with a dietary restriction. They deliver hot meals, nutritious meals, five days a week to those in need. They deliver cold food, run a lunch program, arrange for dining in, in apartment buildings. Over the course of the year, they deliver, listen to this, 42,000 meals, and they need more than that, Mr. Speaker. When they show up at the door of that senior who can't go outside, they're a friendly face. They check on them. They build lasting relationships, and they do this all as volunteers. It's a service like this that shows how caring communities work. I want to say thank you to the bottom of my heart to every single volunteer who does this for our community. I want to thank Roger Smith for showing me firsthand what it looks like to build a compassionate society. Lastly, I want to say, and this is the most important part, and I want my colleagues to listen, they're only able to do this work because of the funding provided by the Ministry of Health. That funding has been frozen for eight years. I can't think of a fewer things to provide a better service for our community with provincial tax dollars than supporting volunteer work of Meals on Wheels. So today I'm asking the, this government to unfreeze and increase this funding. Do it for the elderly, the disabled, and the veterans who depend on this friendship and service offered by some of our community's most dedicated members. And if you want to keep people in their homes, support Meals on Wheels. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thursday, March 21st, marks the beginning of spring and a new day for the Iranian and Persian community. Here, here. I would like to take this opportunity to wish them Nuruz Piruz. Wow, look at Daisy. Look at Daisy. A prosperous new year. After spending almost the entire month of February attending events celebrating the Chinese New Year, I can now look forward to sharing the celebration of the New Year and welcome spring with the Iranian and Persian community. Here, here. I've already had the privilege of attending three events last week to celebrate Nuruz, and I was particularly particularly touched by the celebration organized by the Iranian Canadian Teens Club. 
I want to thank the dedicated parents and leaders for gathering teens and young children to celebrate, perform, and learn about the customs and culture. I learned from that too. The Nuru's celebration includes the custom of setting the half sin table. I also purchased some sajid, which is dry fruits and representing love and affection. And I also bought a bowl with gold fish, which symbolizes new life. Well, for all Canadians, Nuru's provides an excellent opportunity to reflect on the tremendous contributions that people of Iranian and Persian heritage have made to this country and rich and diverse heritage. Nuru's Pirus. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Nickel Belt. Merci, Asian. Thank you. I would like to wish you all a very good Francophonie week. I would like to thank the Legislative Assembly for their support toward my motion to modify the practices of our legislature when we are writing laws in French right now. The masculine is used as a neutral by our redactors, and as we've said, for a very long time, the masculine, masculine form is stronger than the feminine. We are trying to modify this practice by having an inclusive language for women. It is known is it, it is a known practice. I would like to thank the clerk for their support with this change. I can't wait to see the first bill talking about the minister and the member as a woman. I would also like to tell you about what's going on in my constit during this uh, this week. I would like to invite everyone at the Collège Boréal for an, an evening of songs with the, cooper the Artist Corporation of Ontario, and he will sing some of my favorite songs. Daniel Bedard is the um, artistic director. Steph Paquette will be there. It will be quite the party. I would like to invite everyone to Sudbury. I wish you all a very good Francophony week. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member from Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, my fellow Mississauga members and I had the honour of hosting the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport at the Living Arts Centre. Together, we announced more than $2.6 million in grants to organizations across Mississauga through OTF. This funding will go a long way to support a number of initiatives that promote art and culture as well as strengthen our local NGOs. We heard from a number of organizations about how crucial these funds are in sustaining and improving their services aimed at some of our most vulnerable. One of the grant recipients is Interim Place, a shelter and 24-hour crisis center for women and children fleeing domestic, often sexual violence. The funds Interim Place is receiving will be invested in developing their peer support program. This initiative is a peer-led workshop which will explore harm reduction from the unique lens of women who use substances. Speaker, the work of Interim Place is instrumental to protecting women from abuse and to building inclusive, equitable, and diverse community spaces in Mississauga. Their efforts resonate with our government as we move forward in addressing sexual violence in Ontario. That is why I was so honoured when the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, responsible for women's issues, called on me to co-chair a provincial task force with her PA, the member for Cambridge, on combating human trafficking. We are both looking forward to meeting with survivors across this province and listening to their lived experiences. We will be seeking insights from frontline workers such as those working at Interim Place, Hope 24-7 or Voice Found, and other experts in the field. Speaker, our government is committed to supporting our art and cultural communities, as well as the most vulnerable members of our society. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Flamborough, Glenwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled to rise today to recognize the City of Hamilton for being chosen to host the 109th Grey Cup Championship in 2021. The Grey Cup is a national institution and one of the largest sporting events in Canadian television. It will be the first time the iconic Canadian Football League Championship game will be played at the new Tim Hortons Field. The last time Hamilton hosted the Grey Cup was the legendary snowball in 1996 when the game was played in a blizzard. Hamilton has a long and storied history of involvement in the Grey Cup, 
During the early years, in the 50s and 60s, the Hamilton Tiger Cats were a steel town dynasty. They went to the Grey Cup 10 times. They were first in the East 13 times. Joe Montford, Ben Zambiazzi, Danny McManus, and Rocky DiPietro are just a few of the Thai Cats inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. And then there are CFL legends Bernie Filoni and Angelo Mosca, whose Thai Cat numbers have been retired. Both Filoni and Mosca played in multiple Grey Cup championship games. The Grey Cup will be a wonderful opportunity to showcase what Hamilton has to offer, including its world-class restaurants and entertainment venues. Hamilton is beginning to plan the week-long festivities, which will feature gala concerts, parties and fan festivals. And Mr. Speaker, the economic impact is expected to be huge for both Hamilton and the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our times for member statements this afternoon. I beg to inform the House that today the clerk received the report on intended appointments dated March 19, 2019 of the Standing Committee on Government Agencies. Pursuant to Standing Order 108-F9, the report is deemed to be adopted by the House. Reports by Committees Introduction of Bills Member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Speaker. I move that leave be given to introduce a bill entitled An Act to Proclaim a Day of Remembrance and Action on Islamophobia.